on another adventure on our way to the truck we have a trailer waiting for us that is going to Calgary Alberta it's a little over a day's drive from here I've got to be there tomorrow at 1 p.m. and it's about 24 hours comfortably to get there so it'll be a little rushed this trip uh, I, I waited a little bit longer than uh, I probably should have to get going but I'm still on time, I'm still on schedule. I just won't have as much a time to stop for long extended coffee breaks on the way there. We'll just have to give her a little bit. That's okay, we'll get there. It's not like we gotta chain anything down or strap it down or tarp it, right? Now that we're back on van division, all we gotta do is go hook up and go. Man, that is so nice. That is so nice. I have a whole new appreciation for it. It's just, you hook up and go, that's it. That's it, and then you don't gotta worry about it all the way till you get to Calgary. You don't gotta stop and make sure anything's falling off. You don't gotta tighten the chains, tighten the straps. You don't gotta make sure your tarp is, isn't ripping and stuff on the corners. No, you just, you just go. You just hook on and you just go. You just send it all the way there. And when you get there, all you do is you open the doors. So enough about that. <laughs> we. We gotta get going as soon as we can here. Uh, the office wants to see me before I head out. I'm guessing to give me special paperwork or instructions. I believe I'm meeting another driver there in Calgary and uh, I've gotta help him with the unloading process. Cause it's not as simple as just swinging open our doors. We have uh, multi-level trailers and uh, we deliver uh, a whole bunch of stuff that requires a little bit of muscle and work and effort to deliver it. So it's not like I'm doing nothing. I'm not just a door swinger. But I'm mostly just a door swinger now, yeah. That's okay. I'm shameless. Just a door swinger. Steering wheel holder. It's a nice break. <laughs> and once I get there, I have to help the other guy, I believe, and unload both our trailers, which is cool with me. That's fine. And we'll see what happens from there. I don't know, I have to, I booked off two weekends from now, so in two weeks, my dad is coming down, my father-in-law is coming down, my buddy Rick's coming down, obviously my wife's gonna be there, my mom's coming down, uh, and we're all going to uh, uh, install that back door in our house. Take out that big window and install, install a back door. So it's a little bit of a job. Uh, my dad has a long history in carpentry. Uh, my father-in-law has some history in that as well, I believe. So they know what they're doing, and then me and Rick, we're the young guys, we're the muscle. We'll just uh, pick up and move everything. <laughs> so that should be fun. So then we'll have our ceiling done on our veranda and the back door done. That's two projects done early summer. It's not even summer yet. And we're off. We're on the, uh, the Winnipeg Freeway. It has stoplights, but it's free to drive on it. For me anyways. I mean, someone's obviously paying fuel tax, so I guess it's not even free to drive on. Winnipeg they really love their traffic lights and now I'm stuck in the left lane because I haven't been able to get over to the right lane I shouldn't be in this lane at the stoplight but here we are living the dream right so we got to get around Winnipeg here and get onto Trans Canada westbound and uh, make our way towards Calgary we're delivering to a uh, a brand new golf course on the uh, west side of Calgary. Looks like it's going to be a pretty fancy place when it's all finished up. There we go. Now we're in our rightful place. 
I hate being one of those guys, like those guys in front of us, I hate being one of them that's in the left lane at the stoplight. There's a little heads up, a little tip from Trucker Josh. You ready? You don't get many of these. When there's a stoplight, if at all possible, stay in the right-hand lane if you're a truck. Leave the left-hand lane for the cars and pickups to get past you. They all got places to be also, and they're faster, or they got better acceleration. So let them get all past and then worry about passing people after that. But you should stop in the right lane at a stoplight, if at all possible. Sometimes, as you saw there, it just doesn't work out. But just gotta do your best. This guy's got a nice tractor on the back of his trailer here. I need a new lawn tractor. I was hoping to get one next summer. Guess we'll see. I guess we'll see what happens. It's my life motto lately. We'll see what happens. Well, we're not going anywhere without some coffee. It seems like everybody else has got the same idea here or what? All right, here we go. Corner Oak Convenience Store in Oak Bluff. Not just a convenience store, there's a Timmy's in there. Incognito. I don't know how many people know that. They don't have very many signs advertising that there's a Timmy's here. They just set up these new pumps here. Looks like they're still working on them. Looks like they just repaved this lot, which is super nice. Too bad people still park just all over the place. Just wherever, man, you pull in. Put her in park and go inside. This is Canada, eh? It's the way we do things, apparently. It's not the way I do things. I'm gonna back into a spot here beside this guy who actually knows how to park. Saddled up, buckled in, locked in so we won't fall out. The doors are closed on the trailer. I've got my Timmy's. Got a BLT sandwich and a honey cruller donut. I got my weasel. It's gonna be a good day. It's a beautiful day to drive too. It really is. The sun is shining. Finally getting some nice weather up here. So I've been assigned to this truck for about three weeks now. And I've been living in it for what, two and a half weeks on our last trip there. It still reeks like cigarette smoke in here. I must have gotten used to it last trip because I thought that it was all gone. I guess I just was in here for two and a half weeks. I guess I didn't smell it as bad. But I got back into the truck just now, today, loading my stuff up, getting ready for this trip, and all that smell was back. Oh, man. And I looked closer on the walls and the sleeper of, the, of this truck. There's an orange film, like an oily film, on all of the walls. I gotta wipe down all of the walls in this truck now. They must have been a chain smoker or something, like smoking two cigarettes at once, you know? I don't know how you smoke that much inside a confined space. Like, this truck isn't that old. Like, to, to put a yellow film, remember I told you I had to uh, wipe this windshield down because there's like a thick, oily film on the windshield? Like a yellow film? And this dashboard, too? The whole sleeper's got it also. This whole truck is just caked in like cigarette tar. This is like a $200,000 truck. And you're chain smoking in it. That's just, oh, it makes me mad, you know? Like I said, I got nothing against smokers, but if it's your own vehicle, your own, your own house, I understand it's your stuff, who cares, right? But I get into this truck and I gotta wipe down like they did offer to have it detailed and I said I'll just detail it myself so some of this is on me I could have had someone else do this for me but I didn't realize how bad it was gonna be like I don't know how much you have to smoke to leave a film on everything like that but it, it's got to be quite a bit and it's all the way in the back and on the roof in the back like, wow I'm so glad I'm so glad I haven't developed that habit I'm so glad if you have hey that's 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 up to you but remember that's what imagine what your lungs look like right if if i'm like wiping off like a thick layer of tar and orange and yellow filth off the dashboard and off all the walls of this truck 
Imagine what their lungs must look like. Just wow. I don't know. I don't know, I couldn't do it. I got some good friends of mine, my cousins that I hang out with all the time smoke. I don't I don't care if that's what they want to do. Doesn't even, doesn't bother me if they have a smoke while we're hanging out. And if they want to go outside and have a smoke, I'll usually go outside with them to hang out with them, keep them company while they have their smoke, right? That part doesn't bother me. It's just I'm just It's a habit I don't understand, but I also acknowledge I don't have to understand everything in this world. Well, this is the first trip across the west in this truck. She's doing good. Smooth as glass, just sailing. Like a sailboat, just gliding across the smooth waters. Pretty much, pretty much. Some of you have asked what this thing dangling over here is. Uh, I think it's supposed to be the mic for the onboard telephone system. And it's supposed to be stuck somewhere, but obviously the sticky stuff on the one side came off. I'll have to fix that sometime. Keep forgetting about that. Saw a couple of you ask about that. Uh, we're here in uh, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, Canada. We're going past Whitewood here on the way west. Look at all the bugs on the windshield, eh? And it's not even evening yet. You just wait till the sun starts to go down. This is nothing yet. There's nothing. We can try to wipe this off if we want to. Not enough washer fluid in the world for these prairies. Doesn't do nothing. We'll have to stop and actually squeegee them off. But 10 minutes later, they'll be back. So I have 971 kilometers left to go to Calgary. That's uh, what, about 10 hours of driving. So about 600 miles. Somewhere in there. We'll make it as far as we can tonight yet. Uh, we got eight hours and 22 minutes available to us on our clock. We did get a reset. I was home for four days, actually. I was only planning on being home for two, but uh, the way things worked out, we were home for an extra two days, which worked out really nice for me because uh, I got a lot of work done at home. I got that veranda ceiling done. For the most part, you saw it there, right? I have to finish the venting on the, on the outside edge yet. But uh, I got the big part done and it took a lot longer than I thought it would, a lot longer. Took four days. I thought it would take a day and a half. It took four days. But I am also an amateur and I didn't know exactly what materials I was gonna need so I had to run into town twice to go get new materials and exchange some that I bought that were wrong. But we got it done. And now we're rolling on. We'll be busy for the rest of the month. Like I said, gotta deliver this load to some fancy golf course west of Calgary. And from there, I believe I'm heading up to Edmonton. And we have a load there waiting for us. Not sure where it's going. Not sure where it's going, but uh, I'll pull it wherever it needs to go. So we're uh, directly above uh, the western edge of North Dakota. In a couple of hours, we'll have passed on to uh, northeastern Montana. If you're wondering where we are according to the US map. Just above North Dakota, Montana. Just on the Canadian side, eh? Nice and green up here now though. Look at this. Golf courses are open. Businesses are all opening back up. Pretty much back to normal for the most part. As normal as it's gonna get, I think. Which is good. I hope things start getting busier again. probably be a little while before they allow concerts and stuff like that but that is what it is you all know the story you're all living it we're all living the dream right now this is the Whitewood auction livestock sales you want to buy some cows that's where you go I think I'm gonna pull in in Balgoni Balgoni baloney that's about oh actually that's quite a ways up yet Another couple of hours. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. See, this highway was built along that railway there. That railway is what uh, joined Canada, our west coast and our east coast. Way back in the day under Sir John A. Macdonald, the founding father of Canada. He united the country coast to coast with that railroad right there. Very important railroad. 
And now we got a highway parallel to it. Very important highway too. I mean, how would this golf course in Calgary get their stuff if we didn't have this highway here? I mean, you could send it by rail, but that would probably take two weeks. Whereas I can get it there in a day. This thing, this highway makes it a lot better. This guy one, ooh, nice W9. Very nice, very nice. You guys wanna see it? Very nice. He waved at me, I didn't wave back. My bad. Too distracted by your nice Kenworth. This guy's hauling a lot of weight, I bet. The guy in front of you is turning, buddy. There you go, he's on. <laughs> Gotta get back over here. My Algoni baloney. You and your fancy roundabouts that everyone hates. But hey, you want to be all fancy. Turn right in 100 meters. Um, I know, Karen. I know. We're not. I'm off course. I know. Turn right. No. Where am I going to? I am turning right. You want me to go to the field over there? Look at this poor truck stop here. Got killed by the Flying J over there. Used to be a little truck stop there, a little local. Big corporation came in and crushed it to the ground and curb stomped it. Poor guys. Continue oh, uh, on this road for 22 kilometers. I like the Flying J. I do. I just. I do know. I. I know the consequence is that we gotta sacrifice a lot of small business for it, and that's the sad part. And I know I'm one of those guys that loves Walmart. I'm one of the. I'm part of the pack. I know I'm just a sheep. But uh, I don't get why they get to be open, but everyone else has to stay closed. It's too dangerous to go anywhere else. It's too dangerous to be on the beach. Go over there and stand in line at Walmart. It's safer there. I don't get that. I don't know. Continue on this road for six kilometers. I'm glad this whole thing is just about over. Ugh, at least here, anyway. It was never really bad here on the prairies. We never really got the worst of it. Nice truck. Very nice, very nice, how much? So we're gonna go park in a parking spot and then I gotta wash this windshield off before we leave. I'm not getting fuel here though. Or maybe I should, I'm under a half a tank now. You know what, yeah, let's just go get fuel. We're here, let's do it. 